Lord, as we continue in the prayerful spirit with, with your word today, as we've said about you and so distinctly calling upon you, realizing that you are everything that we need and you're all that is most important in the world and you are the creator of the world and you are everything and, and, and you're opening up our eyes to be able to know and to see you. And, and so God, as we think about this particular first Sunday in this year, when we come to you calling upon you to be our God and to lead us and to let us follow you well and love and grow in you, and as a congregation, as a church, to really just be centered well in you. And each one of us, as we think about the things in our lives that we need, the things that we need to do, the things that we are not certain about, and the directions that we need, God, I just pray your Holy Spirit reign in this place. God, in all of our lives, that we would just so get what it means to be people of faith and followers and trusters of you. And so, Lord, we commit to this time to you this and just let every one of us leave this place in a deeper, more meaningful relationship than when we came in. And as we think about singing to you, loving you, worshiping you in all the ways that we can, we're so excited to get to be a part of your word today, too, that you've given us a message to us, for us to have. And that, God, that we get that opportunity to be able to, to serve you in this and, 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 and to have your word uh, in our lives. Now, faith, this is, this is from Hebrews chapter 11, uh, in our New International Version. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. Thank you, God. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. And that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And Father, as we learn more about this today, bless John as he preaches your word to flow through him. Everything that he says and everything that we hear, just to be so in sync with you, in step with you, Holy Spirit. We love you so much, God. We come before you. We're excited to see what you have for us today, to learn and grow. For we know that we're coming to you by faith, for it is impossible to please you without faith. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. You can be seated. Thank y'all for being the strong guys up here because I cannot do it. Hey, you rolling up here good. All right, so you've got your Bibles. That's a prayer. If you have a phone, that, that's great too. I need you to turn, as you just saw, to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And we are going to go over the word of the year. I've been doing this for quite some time. I don't even know how many years. Some of y'all remember? I don't remember. But it's been a while. But why are we doing it in January? Because it's the one time, if you're in academics, it's one time if you just got done Christmas and New Year's, it's one time that we need some motivation. This word is for everybody, but it is specifically for every one of us. Because we do this together. So here it is. The word of the year is, and I need a drum roll, please. That's all. Faith. Faith is the word of the year. Now you said, but John already have faith. Do you really? Do you really? And we're going to break it down. Watch this. We're going to go to the next slide here. He's going to show you this faith. Now I want you to see this. Okay, here's my little academic side. 
Look at that. Faith is used how many times in Hebrews? Talk to me. 31. 31. But God has a word for us. Look what it says. How many times in the chapter 11 is the word used? 26. 26 out of the 31. Now, my math is not great, but that leaves you with five. Look what it says there. In, in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 38 and 39, those are the last two verses in chapter 10 that goes into chapter 11. Those are the last two verses. And how many times is the word faith used? Two. two. So 26 plus two is how much? 28. So 28 times out of the 31 times. The word faith is used. Everybody in this room, you're going to be challenged by faith this year. Let me just give you a word to the best I can understand the Holy Spirit. Your faith will be tested. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1, and then we go to verse 2, so it's only two verses out of chapter 11. How many times is the word faith used in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2? So what's the math? Out of the 31 times, how many times is the word faith used just in the last, last two verses of chapter 10, 26 times, obviously, in chapter 11, and verse 2 in chapter 12 one time, what's the total? So out of the 31 times in that book, faith is used 29 times. There's a reason that God is calling us to faith. Scripture says we walk by faith, not by sight. Do you really have faith? I'm not talking about, we, for some of us in this room, it could be a salvific faith, but I'm going to talk about some more things. Here we go. I believe the next one is Romans, uh, uh, excuse me, is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, if that is correct. Now look what it says. Now faith, and I'm going to use the NIV here. Uh, that's the New International Version. That's how I grew up in that. You know, I went with King James or King Jimmy. <coughs> some of y'all laughed a little. Some of the older people are like, oh, I remember that. Everybody else is like, what's King King James. Here we go. Now faith is the what? Confidence. In what we hope So when my wife and I, she was on this side, I was on this side when we got married. We're going to love each other forever. How do you know that? We didn't live forever. How do you know that? I'm going to be a star athlete. How do you know that? I'm going to be the best business person ever. How do you know that? How do you know you're going to be the best teacher? How do you know that you're going to graduate? Uh, yeah, I know you walk by faith and not by... But how do you really know? Faith is what? Confidence, Confidence in what we... Oh. And the... About what we do not see. When you walk with Jesus, everything changes in your life. And I want to really get into that. Here's the outline. You ready? Here's the outline. If you're taking notes, which I pray that you are, put it on the phone, do something. Here's the main idea. Here's the one thing that we're going to stick to today. Internal faith in Jesus produces external faith in Jesus. Okay? Let me say it again. Internal faith, because Faith is the what? Confidence. Of what we hope for. I'm going to use another version. Faith is the substance hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's, a, that's another version. That's a version I grew up in. But look what it says. Internal faith in Jesus produces external faith in Jesus. When I don't see external faith and thus stepping out to do things for Jesus, here's my question. How's your internal faith? I told you when that and I get married. Internal faith. Oh, I love her so much. 
external faith in her. Why am I doing this? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But straight up, I'm going to make great grades. John, why'd you fail classes? And that's like, he can't do it. You know, the point is, what is God saying? This is the word of the year. What is God's faith telling you? And faith isn't doing this. This is not faith. John, I, you, are, you are going to grow your hair back after all that treatment. No. It's been two and a half years. Bye, Felicia. Single happen. But that's not what God is saying to us. What God is saying to us is what is God calling us to do? Here we go. Internal faith is in Jesus produces external faith in Jesus. Here's your outline. Here's a quick outline. We're going to go to question number one. Here we go. What is internal faith? Internal faith is interesting. As we look there, we're going to talk about faith in A. And I just want to spend some time with it if it's cool with y'all. Okay, this is the outline. Letter B is going to be confidence. Letter C is going to be hope. And letter D is going to be love. So if you're outlining this, because outline it fast, because we get to go through it fast. And there's a scripture on there in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And I remember that God really spoke to me on this. And now these three remain. Faith, hope, love. but the greatest of these is love. Why is love greater than faith? <clears throat> Come on, y'all know that. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. God is love. 1 John chapter 4. Where did we get love from? Jesus. Okay. Um, here's the next question. So I only have two questions about this outline. What is external faith? That's the idea. What is external faith? What does it mean to live by faith? Or, or to live it out? Uh, letter A. Commend for. That we're going to see in verse 2. Uh, we're going to be understand in verse 3. And we're going to look at the scripture, Matthew uh, chapter 4, 3 through 10, maybe a little bit. If we can get there. Uh, we're going to look at formed in verse 3. And we're going to look at um, offering in verse 4. Do what God has called us to do. We're going to look at Mark chapter 12, verse 30, Hebrews 10, 38, and 39 that we talked about, and belong in verse 39. Everybody cool with it? Then we're going to have some uh, um, decision and application. Here it is. Ready? Come on. Here we go. Take those notes. We're going to look at Hebrews 11, 4 through 6. But here's application number one. Pray for an increase in faith. Right? It's going to be pray for an overview or uh, overflow with hope. And uh, application number three is going to be surrender to God's love in Hebrews 11, 6. And the application is the Lord's Supper. Everybody good to go? We good? All right, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. Uh, humble, uh, we humble ourselves in front of you because what you give us is the opportunity of faith. It's not like the world says. The world says, oh, I'll put my faith in, I'm going to get a great job, which is not even a calling of a Christian. We have work. And Lord, you say that we're going to, people are going to say, well, I'm going to do this. Well, what has that got to do with faith? Oh, I believe this relationship is going to work. What does that mean? Even the demons believe in shudder. So what does it mean? You've called everyone in this room for faith. Pray that your Holy Spirit, as you speak to us, we will surrender to the call of faith. And Lord, we will walk by faith and not by sight. For your glory. And not look at the waiting for the external outcome but trust in you by faith in this moment that there will be an external outcome for your glory. Lord, I pray I don't come with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit and the power so that everybody's faith in here would not rest on human wisdom, but on the Spirit and power. In Jesus' name we all said what? Amen. amen and amen. All right, here we go. Let's go back to the main idea. Internal faith in Jesus produces external faith in Jesus. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Many of you have it memorized, ready? Here we go. This is NIV, New International Version, all right? Now, faith is what? Confidence. In, I love this, faith is confidence in what we what? Hope for. 
Okay, you know, I'm just going to say this. What is eternal faith? Faith is this. The Holy Spirit gave this to me. Jesus, the name above of all names, right? I'm putting my faith in all names. So if all names is money, if all names is value, if all names is popularity, Jesus is above that. So what is this faith? What is the real point in this? Faith points to Jesus as our leader, our God, our uh, protector, our deliverer, because he is Lord and Savior. When I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ, we've already gone over this a bunch of times, and so he becomes my Savior, right? I surrender my life, whatever you want me to do, but he's my Lord, so he tells me what to do every millisecond of every day. Now, I'm disobedient, but because I'm saved, I'm a saint who might sin, but I'm not a sinner who sins. I'm saved. But he's also my Lord. He tells us what to do. He's telling you on what degrees. He's telling you your job. He's telling you the next steps. What are you going to do for your kids? What are you going to do for your marriage? What are you going to do for your next situation? God is telling you right now this idea of faith. All right, here's the definition of faith. You ready for it? Amen? Amen. Oh, thank God. That was, that was popular. Here we go. Faith. Faith is this idea of trust and confidence. It's not just belief. Oh, I believe. I believe I can make this great. Oh, I believe I can do this. It is not, faith is not internal of what I think. Faith is stepping out and doing what God has planned us to do. So when I stopped being a coach here, you know that after almost, almost eight, eight years and eight months to go into ministry, like what is going on? But you've got to do what God has called you to do. And we're going to talk about how do you know? How do you know it's not just what you believe, it was what God believes? And he's putting in you. That's the idea behind it. It literally means God's divine persuasion. It literally means, if you want to know what faith means, it means God's divine persuasion. When God called me to pastor, I have no external practice. I have nobody in my family that's been a pastor. I have nobody showing me anything what to do. But I want you to know that God is calling you. You are here because God is going to give you faith. It's a supernatural process that God is calling everybody in this room. Step out. But the only way you can step out is what God tells you on the inside. Then you do it on the outside. The world is always doing it on the outside, aren't they? They believe what they're going to do, and then they just step out and do it, right? Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. That's not what a Christian does. A Christian hears from the Lord, and then we step out and do what God has called us to do, which is totally opposite of what we want to do. Can I get a witness? Because what God calls you to do is not what your emotions say. It is divine persuasion. True, I love this. Warren Wiersbe, I love him. True biblical faith is not an emotional kind of wishful thinking. Did y'all get that? It's not an emotional kind of wishful thinking. It is an inner Conviction based on the word of God. God, when he speaks, the word is living and active, sharper than a double-edged sword, ever able to cut through the joints of marrow, right, and dividing the soul and the spirit. You're saying, these words come alive. They're not just words you read in the book and go, that's nice. Now I don't have to think about something else. I just took some time off. No, this is transforming you. What is God telling you? Everybody in this room, God called you here today because this is... This is our word of the year, faith. You're going to step out on what God is telling you to do. Not what you want to do. Now when you walk with Jesus, God is going to change our want to. And, and that's why I stepped out of coaching here and then to grad school. Ask. So look what it says back in the verse. Now faith is the confidence in and what we hope for. What is this idea of hope? It literally means this. It means uh, it's in, in the Greek, it's a present participle, uh, but it also has a, a middle end, ending or past. In other words, you receive. You receive hope. I don't, let's just get going, let's go. This isn't, this isn't like, you get excited to go lift the weight. This isn't excited to go 
coach a football game, but isn't excited to go sing a song. Those are all like fun things. But hope is something that is given to us. It literally means this in the Greek. It means a present participle that's middle or passive. You receive hope. You receive it. You don't make yourself have hope. You receive it. So that's why we get on our knees in front of the Lord and say, what do you want me to do? And God empowers you. He puts faith in you. And that faith, right, it gives you this hope that you will do what he's called you to do. And the world's going to look at you. And your family might look at you and say, what are you doing? You, you can't do that. You're not smart enough to do that. You don't know what to do. And I just want to tell you, you've got to do what God's called you to do. I tell that to everybody all the time. What has God called you to do? And if you don't know what that means, that's why we're going to have some prayer time for it. Here we go. It literally means this. It, it's actively wait for God's fulfillment about the faith. That's what it means. Hope. It means that. Through the power of his love. Fall in love with Jesus. When I watch families love their children more than Jesus. I heard some, mm, those, are, those, are, those are underscore amens. When you love your children, and you love your best friend, and you love your sweet mate more than you love Jesus, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. People stay in marriages, they stay in everything because it's a financial investment. At some point, it's not going to work. But when you fall in love with Jesus, you don't look at your spouse as the power of love you give. You look to Jesus for the power of love you get to give out. Can I get a little more? Have faith or are you making personal decisions about what you want to do? Are you going to do what God's called you? And that's why everybody in this room right now, let me just tell you what the Holy Spirit, to the best I understand, He is telling you telling me, you're going to live by faith, or are you going to live by your talent? It's your decision. I believe in free will. So this is assurance. Look what it says. Now faith is a, is a confidence in what we hope for and the what? What's the next word? Talk to me. Assurance. Assurance, assurance there is only mentioned five times in Scripture. In the whole Bible, the New Testament. Five times. It is, a, it is a compound word in the Greek. Sorry to be so technical, but that's how I got to learn. It's the word hypostatus. You're like, John, I might have heard that word before. Well, hypo, what does hypo mean? It literally means to stand, and it, means, it literally means uh, under. Status means to stand. So hypostatus means to stand under. Stand in honor. Well, this is what I want to do. This is how much money I want to make. This is who I'm going to love. This is my this is my next step. Listen, I want to tell you as a Christian, you don't have a next step until you follow what Jesus step, because He's the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Don't go your way. Go God's way. Because every time people come to me and they're going your way, it's messed up. I said, John, you, you act like a little football coach today. Well. It's a personal challenge for me. I gotta stand under the Lord. And sometimes the delay is the most frustrating thing I have in my flesh. Come on. I get frustrated. Why God, why are you delaying me? And God always, to the best I understand him, always speaks speaking to me a delay is not a denial. But I'm gonna test your faith. Are you really gonna do what I've called you to do? That's what it is in marriage, isn't it? And you say, I love you to death through his heart. I'm a lover when death? I thought, God, you, you, you raised me from the dead. It's assurance. It literally means to stand on. Now, faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance of what we do not see. And then I would like to go into this application. Well, Hebrews 1.3 says this, and I'll just quickly go there, but Hebrews 1.3 has this idea of being 
being is the same word as assurance in, in the Greek. And it says this, verse 1 and 3. The sun is the radiance, is the radiance of God's glory. And the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by the pow powerful word after he had provided purification for sins he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven and that was Jesus the exact representation of his being that's what we're called to do aren't we? we're called to follow Jesus so here's your application I want to look at something on this so when the Holy Spirit gives us faith through the word, the very presence of that faith in our hearts is all the assurance and evidence we need. Warren Wiersbe said this. Let me repeat it. So when the Holy Spirit gives us faith, because it's not faith, it's not, in, it's not me saying, oh, I believe, I believe Lynette is going to love me forever. No, no. That ain't going to work. Because look at me. I mess everything up. I can mess up all you can eat. I can go up to the little kid who's trying to get a donut and say, here's a chance to you. They turn around and I step right in front of them. I'm selfish. You know? So when the Holy Spirit gives us faith, through the word, the very presence of that faith is our hearts, in our hearts, is all the assurance and evidence we need. When God speaks to you, that's your assurance. That's your evidence. It's not what you see on the outside. When I was called a pastor, I didn't have anything on the outside. I had no relative to be a pastor. I didn't know what was happening. But when you know what supernatural faith is, you can't get away from it. And you try, and you should try every way to get away from it. Oh, I got tested all the time. How do you know God's called you to pastor? Go do something else, John. How many times have we even talked about that? Right, Pastor? How many times? Go do something else. Go do something else. How do you know you're called? How do you call to serve and be a one-star general? How do you know? You have to step, you have to do everything else. But you just can't get peace, can you? You can't get peace inside. You got to do what God's called you to do because nothing else inside it might work in money, but doesn't work in your heart. Number two, faith enables the soul. This is what he said. Faith enables the soul to treat the future as present. When I came down with a brain cancer, I believe God would extend my life. And you prayed over me. And you didn't pray in a question. You prayed in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And yes, he's a graduate of here. Yes, he's number one in medical school. I'm another guy, person high. Yeah, he's got all that. But then faith, he knows, he knows on the ground, what do I have? He knows in statistical data what I have, but we walk by. My belief in Jesus is stronger than what I'm going through. How about you? Come on, somebody. This is cool. Faith accomplishes things because there is power in the Word of God. Is this something you read so you don't feel guilty? Or is this something that the Holy Spirit speaks to you that transforms you by what you read? Last thing he said, I love it. God still speaks to us. Question number two, what is external faith? Because question number one was what? What is? So now God's calling you. Once you change it, you're on the inside. He'll change you on the outside. When I fall in love with Jesus, then I, I, my marriage is so much better because I don't look to Lynette to be my internal inspiration. I look to Jesus to be my internal inspiration. And now I give out of my external. And if she don't give back, that's up to her and Jesus. But I know this, I'm doing it with exactly what God called me to do. Mm 
will see. What is external faith? Let's look at uh, chapter 2. And I'm going to move fast. Verse 2. This is what the ancients were what? Commended. Because they lived by faith. And faith is something that God puts in our heart. It's not something that we believe. Even the demons believe in what did you just say? Because that was the correct word. That's right. I'm going to use this verse. Even the demons believe in shut. So what does the word believe? Well, I believe this person. I believe it. Now you just think that person looks good. Why don't you look on the inside more than outside? This is, our, this is the word of the year. Us. God has got to give you the faith. You can't just believe. Well, I believe I can do it. So what? Is God calling you to do it? Now that's it. I love this. Verse 2. He says, and I'll say it again, man, I'm going to confess. This is what the ancients were commended for. The word commend, really there, we have a purpose and a reward. We have a purpose. Everybody in this world. world <coughs> it's what you've been commended for. Look at verse 3. By faith we what? You want to know an answer to all the questions in your life? It's your faith. And it's got to be given by the Holy Spirit. It's not you could just, I'm going to do it. I know I can do it. It's not faith. Faith is something that's given. We understand. It literally means in the Greek, it means to conceive or realize. When you understand, look what it says there. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's what? So God is commanding you today. Will you really walk by? Walk by? And not by? Sorry. You got, you're not going to see what God calls you to do externally. But when he calls you internally, then you will do it externally. So when I'm going to preach here, and there's five people. You will make one penny. Are you willing to do that? I hear all these marriage stories. Well, I got, I got married and we didn't have anything. And there was no money and there was nothing. Great. But what did you do for God? What was the calling of God in your life? You got a powerful time to speak. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all are leaders for Jesus, both of y'all. Think about all the people in your life in ministry. I know you won't mind me using them because we were close. Think about all the people you know. You can talk to Jesus stuff. Think about when Mary was told she will give birth to Jesus. And what did she do? She walked by. Because it was told to her not what she wanted. Mm. Tony Evans. Anybody know Tony Evans? Pastor Tony Evans? Let me just give you a quick illustration. He had a grandchild, and the little grandchild, he, he would walk up to the front of the stage on the ground. Tony would walk on the ground. He'd walk up to the front of the stage, and the little kid was there. He'd say, jump! Jump! Little kid wasn't going to jump. Why? Why? Because why? Tell me. You're scared. Yeah, because there's a distance, like this far. And this little kid going to jump. And, I mean, you know, here... Here he is. So what did he do? He kept challenging the little kid. And so he would walk closer to the kid and walk closer to the kid. He'd say, jump. The little kid's like, uh, his grandson was like, uh. He'd say, you can do it. I'm right here. You can do it. Jump. Kid wouldn't do it. And then get another step closer. He'd say, come on, I'm right here. Jump. The little kid would. wouldn't jump. Then he'd get closer. He'd say, come on, I'll catch you. You can do it. Jump. Tony Evans would say this to his grandson. And he would get right beside him. And finally, the kid didn't really jump. and kind of, you know what I'm saying, kind of leaned in. Now, with that little kid, and now when he'd see his, his granddaddy, his granddaddy can stand this far, and now the kid will run him. Why? 
trusted that Pastor Dr. Tony Evans would catch him. What's God telling you to do? And you believe that he'll catch you. I didn't have anybody else to go to. Family, see the family as a pastor. I couldn't release what the Holy Spirit was putting inside me. I know I wanted to keep coaching. I wanted to make more money. And I couldn't release the internal. I couldn't get it out. And the internal changed my external. Make sense? Word of the year. What is the word of the year? Okay. I didn't hear you. What's the word of the year? Okay. Let God speak to you and go do it. And it changes you internally. It will change your external. I apologize. He's such an amazing man of God. He's kept me up on all, all these notes, and I'm running out of time because we've got some stuff. Uh, and let's just go to the application. Hebrews 11 6. Will you turn there? Come on. Will you turn there? Hebrews 11 6. On your phone, do something. Um, if you get a chance, try to memorize this verse. Try to memorize it. Word of the year. Here it is. And without what? Faith. It is impossible to please God. Put it on your phone. Highlight it. I beg you. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit put this inside of me, and that's why I'm communicating to you outside of me. Make sense? It wasn't something outside. It was some inside. The word became alive when I read it by the Holy Spirit. It was like, share this, speak on this, close on this. Are y'all with me? Change me internally so now I can I can say it extra. Without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must what? Amen. That he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Scripture. Even the demons believe in what? Shudder. Shudder. So do they walk by faith? Yes, do demons walk by faith? Yeah. Quick answer. No. Yeah. Do they believe? Yeah. But they don't have faith. They, they see Jesus from the outside and they stop him on the inside. When you listen to the Holy Spirit, he will change your inside and you will do something. Come on, somebody. I can preach for another hour. He can do something on the outside, but when you go, when you stop listening on the outside, when you don't know the people in my work, you don't know the people in my job, you don't know the people in my dorm room, you don't know all these grades, you don't know, stop looking at the outside. When you walk on the inside, the, why did God do this to me? I can, now I've got a platform because of the inside, I can speak on the Right, doctors? Y'all believe. What's God saying to you? If you don't know, that's why we're here. We're going to pray. Okay? So let's read. Mark 9, 22 through 24. And we're going to close and take the Lord's supper. Mark 9, 22 through 24. He's been so kind. Please, spend time with this. I I dare you in the name of Jesus Christ. I dare you. Before I went into surgery, having the brain cancer, God internally showed me this. And I externally did not for those who are here show me this. Look what it says. It has what? Often thrown me in the fire into the fire and or water to kill me. What? It says, but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. The father's son was demonically possessed, being thrown into the fire. Because demons work on your outside, because they can't change it. 23. <laughs> if you can, said Jesus. I mean, he, this guy's going to Jesus like Jesus. If you can. Jesus is Lord over all, even over evil. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who what? Believes. 
where does the belief come from? Outside or inside? And if you're a Christian, it'll come from the inside before you step out on the outside. Stop looking on the outside. Spend time with Jesus on the inside. And he will call you to do what you never thought you could do. Can I get a witness? Amen. Next verse. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, and this is my word right before the surgery, right when I had notification of stage four glioblastoma, the worst one you can have, brain cancer. I preached on this, didn't I, on a Sunday. I had a massive surgery for five and a half hours on the chief's knee. You were right there with me. Y'all were with me. Y'all were with me. Because internally, God told you to do that. Right? Internally, God changed you on the inside and you expressed this on the outside. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. You want to pray? You want to pray that God will help you overcome your unbelief? Let's go. We're going to, we're going to do the Lord's Supper. I do believe in Jesus. God has changed me. But God is going to call you to do things you didn't know you were going to do. God has got to call, call you to do things that you can't do because it is not you who will do it. It will be the Holy Spirit. Can I just somebody say amen? Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to pray. We're going to read the scripture. We're going to pray and take the Lord's Supper. Every one of you, internally, God's calling you. Make your calling and election sure of the scripture says. Everybody in this room, this is your word for you. Faith isn't something that you think you can do. Faith is something that only God can do. 1 Corinthians 11, 23-26. For I received from the Lord. Am I there? 1 Corinthians 11. You got it up there. 23-26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed to bread. And when he had given thanks, he's putting his trust in God the Father knowing that people around him were going to betray him, run away from him, and one who was the worst was fixing his eyes on Jesus. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the, the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this, right, whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Verse 27, right? Let's go to 27. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. So when we take this the wrong way, we're sinning against Jesus. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. And that's why I was looking around, because there are people I need to ask forgiveness. And I apologize to everybody in this room. Because I know that I come across different than what I did two and a half years ago. My expression is not the same, but I pray that my internal is even greater for Jesus. I have to catch up the thing. No excuses. Verse 28. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat the bread and drink uh, without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. Then, what this verse 
31 and 32 say. I love this. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. Just because you're disciplined doesn't mean you're out of God's salvation. Right? So let's pray and spend time with the Lord before we take the Lord's soul. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. We want to examine ourselves. We want to spend time with you. We're taking this Lord's Supper to say that, we, that faith is really what we're holding on to internally. What you say to us internally, then we go do it externally. But we know that faith is the substance of things put before. It is faith. The walking by faith is the evidence of things not seen. But God, I want to ask for forgiveness. Your word says, for those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. Lord, I don't want any judgment. I, I'm a sinner. I sin so many times. I know I'm a, a saint. We're all saints in this room that are saints, but we sin. And I want to confess my sins. I want to confess, Lord, every sin that I've had with my family, with this church, with uh, friends, with this uh, university, and extended family. God, I, I, just, I just get angry. But I know that you forgive me, but I, I want to publicly express that. That is what verse 30, where it says, that is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. Verse 31, but if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, and so Lord, we're looking at ourselves right now, we're looking at the struggles we have, we're looking at the internal problems and all those things that have been shown externally instead of walking by faith and not by sight, Lord, we, we ask for forgiveness. We would not come <coughs> under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So Lord, thank you for the discipline because you love us and you express that in us. And right now I'm going to pause for a couple seconds. We're just going to confess our sins to you internally. And then we're going to go and, and get the bread and the juice and drink it and eat it. Because of your grace. So Lord, we ask forgiveness for Lord, we start this new year, we start this semester, we start all these things. Faith. Faith comes from you, it, and it comes from you internally, and it changes us the way we live externally. Because we know that faith is the answer for everything. Because of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy in Jesus' name. Get a moment. We're going to hand those out, or if you want to grab one of these, they're over to the back side. Some people are going to hand some of those out, get you some of this, or you can come and get some. We're going to get these, go back to your seat, we're going to take this.
So, Lord, as we go back to our seats, uh, here it is, January the 7th, the first Sunday of the new year. So, Lord, as we get ready to take the semblance of your body, we look to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We eat the bread. Verse 25. In the same way, after supper, he took the bread, excuse me, took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. I love what he says. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You take the cup. So, Father, all this is an example of what you've done for us. We celebrate the promise of Jesus. We celebrate the hope in Jesus. We celebrate all that you're going to do in and through us because of grace. These three remain, 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Thank you that you love us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Thank you. So we put all of our faith in you. Because you love us. We surrender to that love. And we walk by faith. We put all of our hope in you. And you bless everyone this new year as they listen in their quiet time and in sermons and in discipleship what you're saying to this and to them internally that will cause them to have faith. Will you really do it, Lord? And we know that this faith will increase hope because you will. We might not see what we're stepping to externally, but we know that you have stepped to us internally and that we are saved. If there's anybody in this room that does not know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, God, I pray, it is not coming to a church. It is not coming to take the Lord's Supper. It is not coming just bringing a Bible or memorizing scripture. It is an internal relationship with Jesus, surrendering our lives to Jesus, admit that we are sinners, confess our sins, and give everything who we are internally to you. Our heart, our mind, expresses in our body. You are our Lord and Savior. We ask that you save us now. If anybody's done that, will they come to us so we can begin to suffer? We love you, Lord. I pray that you will bless everybody in this room. This is a special time. Because you're a special God. In Jesus' name.